So here's a couple of pieces of uh, tinder fungus drying out, two different sorts actually. Um, the one on the left is true tinder fungus with a black exterior. Um, the true tinder fungus is still brown inside, that's the part that's the tinder, the black stuff you need to chip off. Um, but this is what is true tinder fungus and you don't need to prepare this, you just need to dry it and then once it takes a spark it will become an ember which you can blow into flame and this grows on birch trees you can see a bit of birch bark there with some tinder fungus on it so this is just drying out nicely um, here I got this two days ago um, and this is false tinder fungus this is a shelf fungus that grows on birch trees as well um, but I'm told other trees too um, and again inside it's brown, uh, it's fibrous, but this is um, spongy actually. Um, and I, I'm not sure if it's spongy before it gets wet inside. This was soaking wet when I collected it a couple of days ago. Um, and it was also off a birch tree. And you can see a secondary mold is growing here. I'm not sure if that's the same sort of mold. Um, but basically, this is very brittle. If you cut it with a knife, it sort of shatters. You can see here's a piece here. It's sort of crumbly, um, which is not ideal to my mind. This is sort of a, a spongy material almost. Um, and again, I'm not sure if it's because it was wet when I collected it. You can see it sort of bends and bends back and it's like felt almost. Um, but supposedly, the false tinder fungus will still light a fire as tinder, but people say that you need to prepare it. And I've been told that soaking it is enough, and that's why I point out that this was wet when I collected it. It may have been a soaking in nature, but I would assume that whenever it rains, these things get wet, right? So, I mean, all tinder fungus, false tinder fungus, should be soaked, just naturally. Um, so, it it is very soft, and basically, people say you have to prepare it by either soaking it or boiling it with plane tree ash and uh, that seemed a bit excessive to me so uh, I dried a piece out and why don't we go try and light it um, and see if the false tinder fungus will burn without any preparation so let's try with the ferro rod to light false tinder fungus without any preparation it always takes a while to get such a small piece to take a spark but uh, that might actually be enough. Let's see, as you can see, it's already actually been lit, but here we go. So, there you can see the ember. If I blow on it a little, you can see it's starting to smoke. And it doesn't go out. In fact, you basically have to cut out the part that's burning to stop it. Um, from consuming the whole piece. So it goes better, it goes faster if you blow on it, of course. But basically, it won't go out, even if it's deep inside, it uh, can get enough air to keep going. And uh, you can try and smother it, but it doesn't work. So you can see there's a nice ember forming here. Um, I could cut that out, put it in a tinder bundle, and uh, that will burn very nicely. This is a nice, dense um, structure in here, and if you cut out a, a big piece and get a, a nice sort of pea-sized piece burning, um, it will start a tinder bundle very nicely. Um, and you can see it's increasing, increasing the exothermic reaction just by itself, um, and it's it's burning more and more. And if I blow on it, you'll see where it's burning. Basically a chunk on the side there, so to stop that, I need to cut it out. Um, and it's pretty hot, of course, unsurprisingly, being fire. But uh, basically, that's the only way to stop, to stop your entire piece of tinder fungus from getting eaten by the ember. Um, 
but it just goes to show false tinder fungus will also act as tinder fungus without any preparation.